2 o'clock. Light crowd today must be something good on TV, maybe. Nap time. That sounds good. Um, welcome. Always like to start off with a humor. Um, so I'll do that first. Happy Valentine's Day. Your gift this year is me. Is it returnable? I tried this with my wife and it didn't work for me. Happy Valentine's. Hey, my eyes are up here. Chocolate and wine. Sorry, bro, I tried. Cupid not having any luck. So this is my wife and I's Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day, you too. <laughs> Say it again. I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. Say it again. Been there. What did one pickle say to the other? You mean a great deal to me. What kind of flowers do you never give on Valentine's Day? Cauliflowers. What happens when you fall in love with a French chef? You get all buttered up. What do you call a vampire sweetheart? His ghoul friend. I never should have told him that chocolate makes me horny. <laughs> debated about that one. <laughs> Love is in the air, as if the air didn't already have enough problems. Forget the health food, I need all the preservatives I can get. Turns out the right mask can make your Valentine's Day a lot more fun. Um, so we had a little power outage yesterday, with some surges also. Um, it created quite a bit of havoc around the campus. It um, some of the it was interesting because the neighborhood basically went down about 1,500 uh, customers, counting us, and it was to the Westminster campus. It was a partial power shut down so partially went down then the generators kicked on then it went down again fully um, and so it caused a couple burnouts um, we have some elevator problems we have hot water problems in the Preston which I was told were resolved just now um, so those should be they burned out some pumps and so we had to replace those get those back online and then there's air in the, the lines in the Preston, so we had to purge all the air. But your hot water should be back on this evening, this afternoon. Um, elevators are down. Uh, we had some problems with elevators. Um, I fried a couple control boards. I actually, ironically, had a meeting with Austin Energy to talk about the power, the, the power fluctuations. Um, and we've had Periodically, over the last couple of years, we've had power surges that have damaged pieces of equipment, even new equipment for us. So um, I asked for them to put some loggers on our transformers um, to, so that we can monitor the power surges and, and any problems that might be occurring. And they're supposed to do that um, soon. And for about 60 days, especially for some reason on the Windsor building, um, the Windsor building has had quite a few surges. Well, for example, the, the pool boiler and that control board was burned up by a surge. The new chillers that we put into the Windsor building, uh, one of their control boards was burned up because of a surge. And we surge protected this stuff. So it's, it's really odd. Um, so we're, we're looking into that. The outage, I don't know what the official outage reason was. I would guess that it was a transformer off-site. Um, and I'll, I'll, 
I'll hear something, I'll probably share it next month. Um, but at this point, most every system is back online. Um, I was told that in the winter we had to reset thermostats in apartments. So we came around and did that. So, but if you're having any problem with um, air conditioning in your apartments, you need to submit a work order and let us know about it. But everything at this point should be back online. I was just told that the, the hot water was the last issue um, and it's been resolved. So you should have hot water, I would say, by four o'clock. So by the time you get back to your apartments, probably this afternoon. Questions and answers. And I, I just copied and pasted these. That's what I'm going to do from now on. So you can see the tone of the questions as well sometimes. I think that's more fun, don't you? In light of so much publicity lately about all the injuries of seniors playing pickleball, why are you so intent upon putting one up here that will hardly be used? Annoy our neighbors and residents with the noise and generally is not needed at Westminster. I am sure there are many more things that money could be used for that more than 20 to 30 residents would use. Um, I think that phase four is going to bring a lot of cool things to the campus, um, a lot of great amenity spaces. The multi-sport court is one of those functions. I think it's a great thing that's bringing to the community. And yes, you may not play pickleball, but you may play shuffleboard, you may play four square, you may play basketball, you may play, you know, badminton. There's no telling. But and, and also it will not be noisy. And I forgot to bring it with me today, but I was going to show you all the rubberized material that we're going to be using on the sport court so that I can um, relay your, or relax your um, concerns about noise. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's a rubberized surface. It will still hurt to fall on, but not as much as concrete or something like that. So I'll bring that to my next chunk chat. When will the Windsor building have a consistent hot water temperature 24 hours a day? Um, to my knowledge, this has been addressed, and all should be receiving consistent hot water at this point. How many of you are not in the Windsor? In the Windsor. Okay. So a few of you. Um, you need to put in a work order. Likely what's happening is there's calcium buildup in your faucets or um, the cassettes that sit behind your shower controls, and those have to be cleaned out on occasion. So if you're experiencing that problem, um, please do submit a work order. The boil, there's a new boiler system on the Windsor. It is huge boiler that should be supplying plenty of hot water. And I, everywhere I go, there's plenty of hot water. Um, and we're checking the temperatures on that system every day. We also increase the size of the circulation pump. So you should be getting super hot water um, super powerful flow in all of your apartments. If you're not, there's a problem in your faucets and in your cassettes that are sit behind your shower control, okay? Uh, what are the differences between the Windsor first floor, west side, and healthcare on the Windsor second floor? Um, the Windsor first floor, so the Windsor first floor of healthcare, the skilled nursing, the nursing home part of the building, is primarily for short-term stays. Um, so short-term stays means typically rehabilitation, um, anywhere from a week to eight to ten weeks. Um, the second floor of healthcare is primarily being used for long-term residents both life plan residents and also um, private pay long-term care residents. Um, let's see, what is the different, what are the difference between first and third floor of assisted living in the Carlisle? There really is no difference, except one is on the first floor and one is up in the air on the third floor. It's still assisted living. Um, and then memory support assisted living is on the second floor, on both sides of the building. So. The south and north neighborhoods, there's two neighborhoods um, that have about 17 units 
a piece, but that's all memory support assisted living. The first and third floors of Carlisle are just that, plain assisted living, okay? The bistro breakfast menu shows breakfast tacos with no price listed. That means free. So why am I being charged? So I fired the snow. I'm just kidding. Uh, we corrected that on the menu. Those tacos cost $3, which is still a great deal. I don't think you can get two breakfast tacos for $3 anywhere else in town but we have that corrected. The only free item is the continental breakfast, okay? But thank you for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> Anybody get free tacos down there? No, I didn't think so. Now that we've changed our logo from green to an attractive blue, I thank you for liking it, we'll be uh, will we replace the apartment number signs and other signs in the halls? We don't have logos on the apartment signs. And we remove the logos um, on most of the signage. If there is the old green logo, eventually it will phase out and the new logo will replace it. But there's not a big priority to go through and just, you know, take out the old logo. But we will slowly change it over time. Just like business cards, I didn't tell everybody to go out and buy new business cards. Use the business cards you have until they're gone, and then when you, you get new ones, use the new logo. Um, but I tried to eliminate um, logos on signage as much as possible. It's less expensive to maintain it, because for some, I've been here 16 years. I celebrated in January. And in that time, we've had four logos. And it wasn't my idea on any of them, but that's, that's where we are. Um, it is a nice, friendly blue, though, I do think, and people seem to like it, so that's good. Uh, why are there both curtains shut and immovable shades across from the veteran's wall pictures? It makes it feel like a tunnel. In that type of display, the pictures won't fade from light, so please at least get rid of the shades. <coughs> So there is an illusion of natural light. So those shades were actually requested by residents that found it difficult to see the pictures on the screens because of the reflection of the natural light onto the screens. And so I imagine those will stay in place. But they are on a timer and they're supposed to open up at sunset. So after the sun has set, um, they will open up. They're on a timer. So that's why you can't raise and lower them. But that was actually requested by residents, just as the request was made for removal. Yes? So the timer is not working, I'm being told. We will look into that. Can we stop having detailed descriptions of the future expansion every time we have a chat? <laughs> Maybe we could have an, the expansion discussed every other month instead, unless there's a drastic change like getting rid of a noisy pickle ball. <laughs> have I told you how much I love you all? I really, I really do. I really do. Um, we will be doing that going forward. And I, I think I presented on the phase four just two months in a row, and I did that because I wanted to keep you updated on the plans. Um, the plans have changed, and I wanted to just keep you informed. Um, the, the next time we probably present on phase four will be the resident association meeting, and I hope to have actually big printouts of the schematics and the rendering so that we can stand and show you where things are going to be and that kind of stuff. So I can shut up about phase four for a while. I'm okay with that. Um, is it true Westminster will be giving us all special classes for watching the solar eclipse in April? Yes, there is a watch party on the day of the solar eclipse. We have a limited number of classes for that event, about 150, right? So if you're more than 150, you probably need to get your own glasses. If you're not coming to the watch party, you probably need to get your own glasses. 
but that's our intent to give you classes so until we run out. First come, first serve, right? Um, will, when will we be, let's see, when will takeout be available from the Rowan? This is not in the current plans for the space. So I don't have an answer, right? Um, question, you mentioned virtual golf as an amenity for the expansion project. Why not put back the real live putting green that used to be in the Windsor Courtyard? Yes, it was used and it was even featured in the annual statement booklet I got when I moved in. Sadly, it was replaced with outdoor exercise bicycles that we've never, ever seen anyone use. We'll consider this for future planning. Uh, the simulator is to be a multi-sport simulator. It's also air conditioned. Um, the, the putting green wasn't used much except for pictures. Um, I occasionally used it for meetings once in a while just to have somebody out there to check it out, but uh, it hasn't been used much either. The bikes are sometimes used for therapy. In fact, some of you may have used the bikes. I've seen residents using them with a therapist um, supervising. Why would the clinic need to be open on weekends with residents paying for the additional staffing needed? You are an independent living. Remember, I'm copying and pasting these directly from the way they're stated. If you have a serious problem on the weekend, go to a 24-hour urgent care clinic. There is one at Lamar and 39. Or do what you did when you were, an ind were independent in your previous home. Call your primary care physician. And I just said, you know, this has been requested by some residents that there's a desire to have the clinic open on the weekends. But even if the clinic was open on the weekends, um, it wouldn't be 24-hour coverage. So you really do need to keep a primary care physician. Our clinic is a great service and they do a humongous amount of stuff there, but it's really a convenience clinic, right? It's not meant to replace your primary care provider, your, your, your physician. Why is the A-wing Preston stairwell so dirty? The Northeast Windsor stairwell, this was brought up at previous chats and they are still dirty. I brought this to the attention of the Environmental Services Director, Stephanie, and she has assured me that they will be swept on a weekly basis. Um, I address this again. So hopefully they will be swept this week and kept clean going forward. If not, somebody's going to be in trouble. Um, the portal has on it our Chuck Chat videos and presentations. Very helpful for those of us who missed being there in person. However, Strange gremlins have attacked the January presentation. It has the January cartoons, which they love seeing, thank you very much, but that is followed by the October presentation information. Could this be fixed? And it has been fixed as of yesterday, right? So I did not accidentally present the October presentation at the same time. Okay, that's good. That's reassuring to me. Fine. I do a lot of these presentations, and that could happen. I hope not, but you never know. Um, earlier this month, the bistro menu was suddenly replaced. Please give us a few days warning when the menus at the bistro, Laurel, and Rowan are going to be replaced. That would let us have a favorite dish one more time before it might be taken off the menu. Do I have any fans out there of that idea? I got one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will address this going forward by making an announcement a week in advance on the portal of when the menu is going to be changed. All right? Does that sound good? Who gets announcements from the portal? Raise your hand. Like you mean it. This whole side of the room is doing well. That, okay. <laughs> we'll try to fix that. But we'll, we'll send out a notice a week ahead of time. So we took something off the menu that you just loved and you had to have it one more time? Okay, all right. Well, maybe it'll be back. Uh, we heard there are politically political party study groups meeting regularly in the Harris Bell Hall. Can these events please be listed on our daily announcements and our monthly calendar? No. I don't say that very often, do I? Surprised you. When can... We cannot... 
publish resident political events. These are booked by residents, which anyone is welcome to do. The activity calendar, has anybody seen the activity calendar? There's no room for this stuff to be on there. So the activity calendars are, are, are specific, specifically for Westminster sponsored activities only. So if you have a, you know, Democrats meeting or Republicans meeting on your own, we're not going to put it on the calendar, okay? So that's always been the practice. We try to stay out of politics as much as possible, and that will continue to be my practice. Question. I have asked more than once since moving in nearly two years ago if these few worn tables and chairs in the Preston and Windsor courtyards, photos were attached, but I did not include them in this could be refinished, stained, and was told no. I can't imagine, but um, I find it embarrassing, especially when guests to either walk by or use this furniture. Can we at least throw them away if we cannot refinish and stain them? Um, we will be addressing these. So I, I saw the pictures. I, yes, I agree. They need to be dealt with. Um, they'll be removed and replaced with um, better better chairs. And if we're if it's possible, We'll touch them up. We'll re stand, sand them and finish them if we can. What would have been best if my predecessor many years ago hadn't varnished them at all and they had been left to its teak furniture, it should have been allowed to naturally age. And just like you all, it would be beautiful teak furniture after a few years. <laughs> so it would have been a beautiful silver kind of wood color. It would be wonderful. Somebody decided to varnish them in the Texas sun, and that didn't turn out real well. But we'll, we'll, we're also, as, as phase four comes on, we'll get replacement furniture for all that stuff. So, um, Can we have an update on when we can expect the pool temperature to be at 86? This has been addressed. As of Monday afternoon, the temperature was 85.5 degrees. The goal is to have between 85 and 87 degrees every day. Shooting for 86, that's really what we're aiming for. I went in today, the pool was being enjoyed by three residents and the water was perfect. So um, I think that's being resolved. Some updates, um, no more questions for a minute. So everybody's aware, how many of you have been in quarantine for a couple weeks recently? Yeah. Look around, folks. No, I'm just kidding. Um, quite a few of us. We had about 40 cases at one time of COVID. We're down to one person on quarantine. I won't tell you who that is right now, but um, for the most part, I think you're 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 doing a lot better with that. Um, healthcare and the assisted living. Um, last I heard, the assisted living had one case amongst the residents. Um, and then healthcare has a few residents that are sick with COVID. It's been light, but because of the cases that we've had, you need to wear a mask when you go into the healthcare or to the um, assisted living. And please make sure that you sign in with the kiosk, right? The AccuShield station, and that you get your temperature checked. And we have to maintain a log of anybody that visits, even if it's a resident. So make sure that you do that, okay? Um, Spectrum Wi-Fi boxes. So the Windsor and the Preston have been mostly completed at this point. There are about 40 apartments, mostly in the Preston, that will need to have wiring replaced because it's not working properly. Um, so that's on at their expense, but they'll be going through those apartments that haven't responded well with the proper signal to go through and pull new wires to those wireless access points that are in the apartments. I have asked that Spectrum go ahead and turn on the Wi-Fi for the Windsor and Preston, regardless of having the whole system up. I think they should be able to do that. We're waiting on their answer today, um, especially since they've caused the delay. Um, the Preston HVAC, so the heating and air conditioning plumbing project, has been completed on A wing and B wing of the Preston. The ground floor is still pending. So we've gathered all of the supplies, all the copper pipe and all the insulation to complete the job, and now we're waiting on a team to start the replacement project. It's the most complicated part of the building because if you can imagine, all of the floors are served by the ground floor. 
That's where the horizontal runs are from the chiller to the rest of the building. So when you look, if you go downstairs, just past that laundry room, you look up and there's like six pipes running along there. That's almost all of its um, HVAC pipe. About uh, five of those lines are HVAC and then the other two are domestic hot and cold water. Well, unfortunately, I wanted to get finished with this project by March and it did not happen. So what's gonna have to happen is that we're gonna have to put in temporary plumbing, temporary pipes in between this chiller section and the other floors. So they're going to put, they're going to run temporary pipes and then bring down those pipes and replace them one at a time. But the reason we're doing it that way is so we don't have to shut down the whole building air conditioning system. The good news is that as we do this work, we're going to install an isolation valve for each floor of C-Wing so that we can continue to do that work at a later date. And then we'll be able to isolate just a few units at a time. And then we'll help you um, go to a guest room while we do the air conditioning work. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get closer to it. Right now we're working on logistics and trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, the good news is that we have the copper pipe. We have all the supplies we need. We're just waiting on a team to start doing that work on the ground floor. And then we'll get that buttoned up and it'll look just like A and B wing do. It was a mess too when we did the project, but now it looks like normal. So. Um, Pi Architects, they're finished measuring the apartments. Um, one of the reasons, I think I mentioned this in a previous chat, but one of the reasons they were doing the measurements of all the apartments is they were creating CAD drawings for us for the Preston building so that we can submit those plans to um, sprinkler contractors and get a sprinkler number for sprinkling the entire um, Preston building. Now, I know that some of you are concerned about sprinkling the Preston building because you've had nightmares about the sprinkler system just randomly going off on you and showering you while you're in your bed at night. That's not the way sprinkler systems work. Um, typically, sprinkler systems are set off by a fire in the room. So the room reaches a temperature where it melts these little um, capsules. Once those capsules collapse, then it allows for the sprinkler to go off in the room and put out the fire. So it's, I know that like false alarms, like people that burn bacon and they set off the fire alarm, and maybe you're picturing the sprinkler system going off at that time, but that's not how it happens. It's not just smoke, it's actual flames that set off the sprinkler system. Um, those of you that live in the Windsor building and the Carlisle building have a sprinkled building. Raise your hand if the sprinkler has gone off on you. Oh, well good. So I'm clearly not lying. It's a true statement. So that won't happen, okay? So don't worry about that. Um, it is, I will tell you that as the executive director, I don't want to make you mad, right? I want you to be happy here. I don't really want to sprinkle the building, but the insurance carrier told us if we don't get the building sprinkled, they won't want to insure us much longer. And so you're a vulnerable population. You're, you're seniors. You don't feel vulnerable, though. You don't look vulnerable to me. But, but insurance carriers, anytime you run in a senior living complex, they want you to have a fully sprinkled building. Um, and so the Preston has never been sprinkled. It's always been grandfathered. By state regulations, it continues to be grandfathered, but we want to maintain insurance, right? In case one of you lets your bacon get out of control and burn the whole place down, you know. Um, but we want to take good care of the campus and really maintain great insurance and protect the integrity of Westminster. So that's why we're exploring the sprinkler project. But not to inconvenience you, not to, Chuck's just making another dang improvement. That's not it at all. It's just because insurance doesn't want to help us maintain insurance if we don't get it, get it done. So. And I can't tell you if it's going to happen next year or the year after. There we go. 
Just an update, I mean, just to remind everybody the hours of the Rowan. I think most everybody knows this now, but the hours are 4.30 in the evening till 9 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Please don't call me upset because you went there on Monday night and you didn't get service. It's closed on Monday night. The, the dining room's closed. The cocktail lounge is still open, right? Um, you do need reservations for parties of five or more. Uh, the Rowan Cocktail Lounge is open from 1 o'clock in the afternoon till 7 p.m. on Mondays. The dining room and restaurant, again, is closed on Mondays. I do get calls about this. Um, the Rowan Cocktail Lounge is open from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Okay. Um, just, I get, I get asked a lot of questions about this. Um, how do we teach our associates and train our associates to be so hospitality oriented? And a big part of that, I came to work here in 2008. Um, I brought a program called Centered Around Resident Powered Services, which is CARES, right? That's person-centered care. And then in 2009, I was asked by Life Care Services to introduce the idea of extraordinary impressions. And Extraordinary Impressions is our hospitality training. So we have some promises that our associates are trained on, um, and we honor those promises every day. But that's a big part of our training. Um, so we greet you warmly, by name, and with a smile. We treat everyone with courteous respect, and I think that's a two-way street, right? Uh, we anticipate your needs and act accordingly. Um, we listen and respond enthusiastically in a timely manner. We make you feel important. Um, just lots of promises that we try to train our associates on every day. And then we have star cards, which most of you are familiar with. But those star cards are extraordinary impression star cards. So when, a, when an associate does something above and beyond, they, they just blew you out of the water. Maybe it was a, a great meal and you had great service. Maybe you had some guests in and you were, they were impressed. Um, then, then pick up a star card at a reception desk and fill it out. And what happens with those star cards, we collect them all year long. We keep count of them. And then we hand out stars of the year for each department. And we just recently had our associate award ceremony. And I have some pictures of that and some slides. Westminster has also picked up some awards already this year. Um, one of the things that you really don't care about, but I do, and the associates do, is Westminster's Experience Modifier. Anybody know what that is? That's good. Um, an Experience Modifier is a work comp number. So it basically is the expense that associates are and what it costs to insure the associates. Um, and so our experience modifier dropped to 0 0.50, so half of a point. This is the lowest that our community has ever had. And what that means is we're a very safe place and that we don't spend a lot on employee injuries, which is a great thing for Westminster and the residents that live here. So that's a great thing. Also, we received the 800 award um, winner, which is an online reputation award, basically. And our um, online reputation was so much more than 800. It was like 1,200 and something. And the industry average is 562. So that's really great. Food and beverage celebrated. So last month we celebrated activities, right? Professionals Week. And in February we celebrated Food and Beverage uh, Professionals Week. And there's 115 associates that work in our food and beverage operation across the campus. There's six kitchens, all kinds of dining rooms, right? Um, every month they produce 29,000 meals. That's 1,000 meals a day, almost, in our food and beverage. That's really an incredible number. Um, so if you do see those folks, just you know, thank them for all they do. They really do an outstanding job. I know that not every meal is perfect, but um, they were 29,000 meals a month is an incredible number. 
So um, we had our award ceremony, and the overall star winner, so she received the most stars, uh, the most Extraordinary Impression star cards the entire year, um, and that was Maria Diaz in Food and Beverage. Everybody knows Maria. She's been here for, I think, 28 years. That was a fantastic job. Um, love her. Um, Monica Caro, who is in uh, General and Administrative Services, she works at the Arbor Reception Desk. So she received the Star Award for General and Administrative Services. Dontel Payne also received. You can hold your applause. I'll just go through these real quick. They're not here anyway, it's just me sitting here. Uh, Dontel received Food and Beverages Star Award. Um, Ernest Galvin, Environmental Services. Maribel Reyna, Community Life Services. Um, so you know Maribel, she's a concierge, right? Um, Angie Pena, Resident Health Services. Isaac Hernandez, Plant Operations, right? You know, Tracy Sims, Assisted Living, and Rebecca Oknama. Uh, health care center. So all those star cards that you turn in really are meaningful. Then we gave out Cornerstone Stone Awards and that's in recognition of being an integral team member of your department, right? And somebody that the department really depends on, right? So Myrna uh, in General Administrative Services, Joe Cruz in Food and Beverage, Lloyd Smith in Environmental Services, James France, Community Life Services, James is in Security, Luis Martinez in Plant Operations, Natalia um, Lipnabicki is Assisted Living. If you've been in Assisted Living, Natalia's been with us a long time. Haley Steinberg is a social worker in Healthcare Center. She won. Um, Haley's been here for, I think, eight years one of the best social workers you'll ever work with. Ann Lipscomb, nurse practitioner in our clinic. Um, and then Extraordinary Leadership Award went to Tim Thurn. He's our executive chef, and he works in food and beverage, of course. And I'll tell you, you know, Tim, Tim is a really good chef, and he's a teaching chef, um, the kind of person that really is invested in growing his associates. And I look at every evaluation for every associate every year. And every time someone turns in, they, they always turn in an evaluation with the associate's input and then also the manager's feedback, right? And every input form that one of Tim's associates turns in always complements Tim's approach and how much he supports his associates and grows, helps them grow and achieve new things in their career path. And so I was really impressed by that. And if you remember many years ago, we did a food and beverage realignment because our turnover was so high in our food and beverage department. It was At one point it was 160%, which is terrible. That means you were turning over 160% of your associates in one year. That was way too many. Um, so since Tim has been our executive chef, now I think six years, um, our turnover in the back of the house food and beverage department is is best in the industry. Um, and those skill those chefs continue to increase their skills, and they get better and better. Um, so anyway, he he won the leadership award. Tim did. Um, Impact award is. Um, one, Jenny Wallace won that award um, in recognition of significant contributions to efficiency, effectiveness, and innovative service delivery. So Jenny is the staffing coordinator for the healthcare center. So she staffs all the CNAs and nurses and helps them with their orientation and their training. Um, innovation Award was Miriam Amaro. You don't know her probably, but she works in the human resources department. Um, does a great job there. Making a Difference Award, Jorge Cedillo, Plant Operations, probably know him. Uh, Community Excellence Award, Anna Hernandez and Environmental Services. Um, and Extraordinary Service Award, Erica Martinez and Food and Beverage. And then Safety Leader Award, you may not know Wendy Gordon, but she works in HR. She's a Human Resources um, Generalist, we call it. 
Um, so she is a, she works for Kim Ogden, the director, and she reports to Kim. But Wendy is in charge of our community safety program, and so she works with the safety committee, um, which I'm a part of. But many associates are on, and that's what really drives our safety culture, and has continued to keep our associates safe. And our when I started to work here, which of course was a long time ago, but our um, modifier was 1.64 so to drop from there to 0.5 is really incredible and she's been a big part of that the tory award is somebody that has worked for westminster less than two years so they're um kind of a star any class a very young star having a mass of the same order as that of the sun Eligible associates have been employed with Westminster for between six months and two years, but they're just an extraordinary performer. And that's Anthony Jackson. He's a CNA a caregiver in our healthcare center, and he won that award. Um, the Devotion Award um, was also won by somebody in healthcare center, Hortense Bajuri. She is a medication aide that works in the healthcare center, and she's been here for about 16 years, and she does a fantastic job as well. And the Above and Beyond Award went to Abby Jordan. She's the food and beverage manager for um, healthcare. She works in food and beverage. And Isaac Hernandez was our Associate of the Year. And a lot of you probably know Isaac. He does a great job. He's a lead in plant operations. And he was really proud of his award. That's all I have today. I do have a few minutes for questions. Be gentle, it's been a rough week. <laughs> Longest Monday of my life, no. Any questions? There's one in the back, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello, okay. it's working. Um, Chuck, I actually posted this on the portal, but I guess you didn't get it. I did it Monday, so. Anyway, uh, it's come to my attention that we have given up butter. We've given um, up butter? Yes, in the kitchens. I mean, the, in for at least the Laurel and the Bistro. I don't know about the Rowan. But I we are butter. no longer able to get butter at our tables. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't eat that margarine stuff. You're still able to get butter. Nope. Nope. No. I ordered on, it. I on, got it today. On, with on my Sunday, roll. I was at the bistro, mm -hmm. and they said, no, we can't give you butter. We can give you clarified butter that they used to cook with, which is that, you know, already melted, stuff completely melted. And, I'll double check. So uh, I'll and But they've given it up for some reason. I think maybe so you because... you can't get butter with your baked potato? Nope. You can get margarine. You can get this fuzzy stuff. It's all whipped up. There's whipped butter. No, it's whipped butter blend. Has anybody else heard this? And it's margarine, and it tastes terrible. Okay. If that's true, I will get the butter back. Please, please. Uh, I like, Otherwise, I I like butter. I, honestly, I had, I had a baked potato Tuesday, yesterday, and I got butter with my baked potato. It wasn't Did it margarine. look like butter? Yes, ma'am. It was butter. It wasn't yeah. that whipped stuff. No. I'll, I'll ask, though. If it is true... We will get it back. Okay. I promise. I did. Because actually, to... butter is better for you than margarine. Yes, it is. They proved that margarine yeah. is really. I know good we go back and forth on that, just like mm -hmm. milk is bad for you, and, mm -hmm. and you can drink too much water. We'll get your butter, no problem. Thank you. Yep. I'm surprised you didn't have a some kind of uh, you know sit in or something over that. That's pretty significant. <laughs> I would park myself outside of the executive director's door until I got butter. You better watch it. Right? I hadn't heard that. Yes? A question. It appears we're having a lot of sandwiches as our special. 
and that is not setting well with some. Is there a purpose, a plan? Is it happening by design or accident? I don't think so. I mean, I think that, um, you know, it's really meant for resident preferences. I don't know if there's been a request for some sandwiches, um, but I don't think, no, there's no, not that I'm aware of, but is there a plan to um, replace the specials with um, sandwiches? Um, maybe the maybe the food committee has had some comments about, hey, I like these sandwiches or whatever. I don't know, but we'll I'll mention that to them. Is that in the Laurel or the Bistro? Is that Laurel or Bistro? Both. Both. I haven't seen a lot of sandwiches in the Laurel dining room for sure. The Bistro on occasion there's some sandwiches, but not a lot. I wouldn't say it's over the top. Um. Ruth up front here, I guess. I just text the food and beverage director, no butter, question mark. <laughs> See how quick I can't remember. How often are our AC filters changed? Um, every three months. Unless um, it needs it more often. There are some residents that are super like they have really bad allergies and they've requested and paid for additional changes. Was that it? Any others? Oh, one, okay. Sorry. Yesterday, um, I was down in the wellness clinic in the waiting room and a man came in and he needed to talk to one of the nurses or some of the other about some biopsies and results and so forth. And he had to talk to the person through that window in front of all of us for a week, and um, I was kind of worried that there might be a HIPAA person around the corner. I but, think you're right. That should I, have taken place in an exam room or a meeting room. But there's no, there, that happens all the time. Well, there, down there a lot. So like, what should happen is like, wait just a minute, we'll have you come back and talk to you. I'll, I'll talk to them about that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Mm -hmm. Health information should be protected, absolutely. Made my eye twitch with that one. We have a microwave that vents into the apartment that requires a filter, and to my knowledge, a filter has never been replaced. Those that. are supposed to be washable. The metal, you're talking about the metal filter above your, yeah. No, there's another charcoal filter above that that's supposed to, only those that vent back into the apartment. There's a charcoal filter that's supposed to be replaced uh, in those, uh, and they've never been replaced. A little red light comes on, and they've never been replaced. Okay. Submit a work order for that to be done. Does, it, does the red light appear when it needs to be replaced? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It says reset. Yeah, I thought, I didn't think they had carbon filters on them. Honestly, but if it does, we should be replacing those. Mine at home does not. Yes, sir. Chuck, I'd like to re-emphasize your presentation, emphasis on quality. It really is an accomplishment you and your leadership team has achieved. And the other night we were at the bar at uh, one of the restaurants, I guess there's only one that has a bar, and uh, not only was the staff member pleased with the little medallion you gave, but mention the, the monetary uh, uh, compensation. And it really goes a long way. And I'm so pleased to have the data on cutting back on attrition, because that is the lifeblood of any quality Absolutely. organization. I appreciate so, your comments. Thank you for understanding. Let's everyone give a hand to Chuck and his leadership team. Thank you. So if we could just get butter, we'd do, be doing all right. Chuck. Yes. Will you give us an update on her daughter's gymnastic achievements? <laughs> sure. Actually, you know, I have her, a picture of her in my board presentation tomorrow. Um, so I think it was three meets ago. She went to what was called the Simone Biles uh, International Invitational. And uh, she ranked first in the state on the uneven mode. Uh, so she, yeah, she pretty scared the hell out of me, though. Uh, she, anyway, 
She's very good. That's her favorite event is the uneven bars. And she does this thing now called a flyaway, which is when she wraps around the top bar a couple times and then flies into the air and does what's called a, a double back tuck and lands on her feet. And that's the part that scares me. But, uh, she does it fine. She does it really well. And I just get scared every time it happens, but she's doing very well. Any other questions? All right. Thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your week. And I hope you enjoy the hot water in the Preston.